Arrays are a fantastic data structure. Not only are they easy to visualize and understand, but they also give you two pieces of information, the value and the index of that value. Sometimes these indices can help you to write an efficient solution to a problem. I am talking about the problem, find the disappearing numbers in an array on lead code. Well, I have kind of given you a hint now. So if you would like to try the problem on your own, feel free. Otherwise, stay tuned with me a little longer and I will show you step by step how you can approach this problem. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, a place where we explore the life of technology and make programming fun and easy to learn. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will see some sample test cases. Next, we will approach the problem in the most straightforward way and see what problems you may face. Going forward, we will try to optimize this solution and eventually, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you understand all of this and it stays in your mind forever. So, without further ado, let's get started. First, let us try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. You are given an array of size n, where elements are in the range of 1 to n. That means that if the size of the array is 10, then that array could have elements from 1 to 10. If your array size is 20, then the elements could be in the range of 1 to 20. And what do you have to do? You have to find the integers that do not appear. So let us understand this with a sample test case. In a test case number one, we are given with this array and the size of this array is eight. So according to the problem, this means that this array could have elements from 1 to 8, right? And you need to find the integers that do not appear in this array. So you can see that 1 appears in the array, 2 appears, 3 appears, you can find a 4, you cannot find a 5, then you cannot find a 6, you can find a 7 and you can find a 8, correct? So that means 5 and 6 are the disappearing numbers. And hence, this will be your answer in the first test case. Similarly, let us look at our test case number 2. What is the size of the array? The size of the array is 2. That means this array should have elements from 1 to 2, right? Now, what are the disappearing numbers? You can start checking 1 and 2. You find a 1, but you cannot find a 2, right? And hence, 2 is the disappearing number. So, in test case number 2, this will be your answer. Now, if this problem statement is clear to you, feel free to try it out on your own. Otherwise, let us see how we can approach this problem step by step. Okay, so let us say this is a sample array in front of you and you have to find the disappearing numbers. What is the most straightforward approach that you can think of? You can start with finding the size of this array, right? The size of this array is 8. So this means that this array will have elements from 1 to 8, right? So one way you can approach this problem is you can start finding each integer. You can start to iterate towards the array and see, okay, I can find a 1. Next, you can start to iterate to the array again and okay, you found a 2. Similarly, you will iterate and then you will find a 3, then you will find a 4 and then you will iterate to the entire array and you do not see a 5, right? That means 5 is missing. So you can write down 5 in your output set, correct? Similarly, you will iterate for each integer up to 8 and you will keep on scanning the array, correct? And ultimately, you will find that 5 and 6 are missing from the array. So these are your disappearing elements and this will be your answer. Now this solution works and it will give you a correct answer every time. This is known as the brute force approach because you are just verifying that, hey, can I even find a solution to the problem? Yes, you can find a solution, but there is some problem. The problem is that if your array is very huge, let's say you have 10,000 elements, then you will be iterating through the array 10,000 times just to check, hey, do I have this integer? Do I have this integer? Do I have this integer? 
and hence this is not a time efficient solution let us see what we can do about it okay so you have this sample array in front of you right and you want to find an efficient solution to the problem when trying to find efficient solutions to problem the first rule of thumb should be that you gather all the information that you have you might as well say that okay the only information i have is this array right but wait in this array you have one more information and that is the indices of all of these elements right since you are given a condition that the elements of this array lie in the range of 1 to n right where n is the size of the array so if your array size is 8 then the maximum element present in this array could be 8 right and this gives you a certain advantage since the range of these values is defined you can refer to these integers as the indices of the array also what i mean by that is this value 8 could represent the 8th element in the array or what you can say is this could also represent the index number 7 similarly the value 1 could represent index number 0 right because an array is 0 based indexing and you can take help of this extra information to manipulate your array so in this array what you need to do you need to find the missing numbers right so one way to approach this problem could be that you start marking out what positions are occupied so when you look at the first element that is 4 you can also look at the position 4 position 4 is the index 3 in the array right because an array is zero based indexing so when you look at this index 3 you see an element 7 right so what you can do is you can just mark it to mark this element i will make it negative that means that I have visited this element. But what is this telling you? Let us iterate through the array and see what we come up with. The next element I see is 3. Now 3 means the third position in the array or index number 2. So I land at this position. I see the element 2 over here. This is still positive, right? So I can again mark it. And to mark it, I will just make it negative. Right? Go ahead now. I see element number 2. So 2 could mean the second position of the array or index 1. I see this element 3 over here again, right? And this 3 is also positive. That means we have not visited it. I will just mark it. So up till now, what you can see is that we have visited these three elements in the array. Let us keep moving ahead and see what we get. I see the next element 7. That is position number 6 in the array. And once again, I will mark it. Next, I see the element 8, that is position number 7, and I will also mark it. Next, I see 2 again. So, 2 means the second position in the array or index number 1, right? What do you see over here? You see that this element is already marked, right? So, don't do anything about it. Move ahead. You see element number 3, that means position number 3 or index 2 this element is also marked right so don't do anything about it move ahead one step more you see element one that means the first position in the array or index zero so now you will mark this four so i make it negative so what just happened you iterated through the entire array right and you marked every position that the integer was present in the range one to n look at your array now and look at these indices that have not been marked these are 4 and 5 that means you couldn't find these two indices and since an array is zero based index that means that you were unable to find 5 and 6 in the array right because if 5 and 6 were present you would have landed at these two positions and they would also be marked negative right so this way by iterating through the array and marking every number at the index you can arrive at the solution let us now quickly do a dry run to see how we can implement this solution on the left side of your screen you have the actual code to implement this solution and 
On the right, I have this sample array that is passed in as an input parameter to the function. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and the test cases are available on my GitHub profile as well. You can find the link in the description below. Let's start with the dry run. First of all, I have this result set that will contain my answer and will be returned through this function. Next, I run a for loop in which I will iterate through this entire array and treat each integer or each value of this array as an index. So, a value of 4 means index 3, right? So, this is where I get the index. Using this index, what I do is, if the value is already negative, I don't do anything and I move ahead. If this value is not negative, then I will just change it to negative by multiplying it by minus 1. So, once this loop ends, what will happen is, this array will transform into right that is because you couldn't find one anywhere in the array right and hence the first position of the array remained unmarked once this is done all you need to do is you again iterate through your array and look at the element that is not marked 4 is not marked so you see its index whatever value is not marked just take that index and add it to your result set. So currently, I will add 1 to my result set. So once this loop ends, this result set will contain all your disappearing numbers. And at the end, you return this result. So I will return this list as my answer. The time complexity of this solution is order of n. That is because you are iterating through the array only once. And the space complexity of this solution is also order of n because this result set could have all the numbers that are disappeared. You could have an array that only has once up till 10,000 times. So all the numbers are disappeared, right? I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, take a moment to realize the solution that we came up with. We took advantage of the indices of the array itself, right? People often miss out that information when they are dealing with arrays. Most likely you would just see the elements like 0, 1, 2 and all the way up to n. And then you will try to manipulate them. Now, an array data structure that has a size of n and if you are also given integers or values that are also in that range, then always try to use this concept. The indices can be really, really helpful. So, just as a rule of thumb, as soon as you see that, okay, array of size n and a range of size n, then you can use these indices to your advantage. What other methods did you come up with? What other problems did you see where you could use this advantage? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. You would be also glad to know that a text-based explanation to this content is available on the website studyalgorithms.com, a pretty handy website for your programming needs. I am including a link in the description below. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also let me know what problem do you want me to solve next, or rather, what do you want to learn next. Until then, see ya!